Hello everybody and welcome to the Across the Stages podcast, brought to you by Absolute Motorsport Radio and also available on Absolute Motorsport TV. I'm James Casey and joining me today will be Joshua Suttill. We're going to quickly reflect on the events of Rally Chile and look ahead to this weekend's Rally Portugal. As we head to Portugal, back on the European scene, it is Sebastian Auger who is at the top of the WRC standings following Thierry Neuville's massive crash in Chile. But it was Oik Tanak who took victory in that round and goes into the uh, this round with uh, a lot of confidence, uh, although he is still just second in the championship, 10 points back on Auger. And uh, we'll just quickly talk through Chile because we didn't have a, a full review episode on that. But uh, Tanak kind of putting in the performance we expected from him uh, that he hadn't put in for a, a few rounds. Yeah, definitely. Just a kind of utter domination, you know, maximum points. Uh, really, really good performance. Like you said, Neville had a, a huge crash. Really good to see him uh, walking away from that one. Uh, it put him out for the rest of the weekend, but it's good to see him back. Uh, and he's already seems to be on the pace. So really good to see that he's back. But yeah, it was a big hit, wasn't it, for Neville? And uh, a big sort of swing in the championship back towards Tanak and uh, Auger in there as well, as always. Uh, and now uh, sort of back in the lead of the championship. So yeah, good stuff from Tanak. Uh, but now a bit more work to done uh, for Neville. And Auger, of course, was in second position, putting in yet another consistent performance, but maybe slightly lacking uh, the pace he would want. Still, I think, going to be... Uh, reasonably happy uh, with that uh, result, though more positive than Argentina. And in third was Sebastian Loeb, who started the rally very slowly on Friday morning, but came strong uh, as it went along. And he, uh, with that podium, has earned another drive here in Portugal, coming in for Andreas Mikkelsen, which was quite an interesting decision to change it that late. But do we think it's the correct one? Yes, basically, <laughs> uh, I think. Actually, to be, honest, to be honest, I'd have probably gone for Neville, Loeb and Mickelson and maybe dropped Sordo for this one. Um, but, you know, on the subject of Sebastian Loeb, I mean, easily his best rally of the season, his first podium. He's had a, a difficult season so far. A lot of sort of odds have been stacked against him. You know, uh, Monaco, he sort of appeared very late, of course, just from the Dakar. Uh, and then, you know, he had uh, a couple of incidents in Sweden and in Corsica especially. So, yeah, really good to see Loeb's season has properly started now. He's really delivering for the team. Uh, and I think it's really good that the Hyundai are keeping his momentum going. And I think he's going to be a real threat this weekend in Portugal. Um, on Mickelson, it's a shame for him. Chilly mistake. I mean, he just had a really bad Chile, didn't he, basically? Uh, but he had a really good Argentina. So it, it's very, very difficult to judge, isn't it? Uh, but that, I guess that's just the way it is. It's uh, the, the harsh reality. But it, I think it's good to see that Hyundai are being so flexible with the lineup and just sort of choosing the best uh, three drivers for each round. I think that Mikkelsen can feel very hard done by. I think when he was dropped for Corsica, a tarmac rally, after not really putting in great performances, I could really understand that. This one is harsh, but you cannot... You can't keep Loeb on the sidelines, can you, if he's on form. Uh, it would just be silly to do that. I think he's got a really good chance in this event of putting in a good performance. I think Milkerson would have done quite well because this event's more similar to Argentina in characteristic. But Loeb, you just can't keep him out of the car if he's doing well. It's a, it's a silly idea. And um, I think you, you can get a win with Loeb, unlikely with Mickelson. So I think they have made the right call, but I do feel very sorry. Uh, for Andreas Mikkelsen on this one. Um, but they need the points, don't they? Uh, lost quite a few in Chile, still at the top of the constructors, but uh, an important round now here for Hyundai to bounce back. Yeah, definitely. Interesting, important season, isn't it, really? I mean, this is like third time lucky. Surely the title, at least one of the titles, has, has got to go to Hyundai um, after two, uh, you know, I think really strong years of pace and plenty of rallies that they won, but uh, so far no championships to show for them. Uh, another kind of change in the lineup uh, from the last round is that Gus Greensmith is going to be in a full WRC car uh, this time round, and uh, his early impressions of the car have been very, very positive, as you would, as you would expect. He absolutely loves it. Um, going to be a kind of building weekend for him, but uh, in Shakedown he showed some pretty encouraging pace, actually, and uh, you never know, he could actually be uh, quite close to the level of the... Uh, guys who have been in the car so far this season 
Yeah, it'd be good to see. He's got obviously a decent road position, and like you say, he's set the same time as as Elvin Evans in shakedown. So, yeah, it's it's looking decent for Green Smith. I mean, he definitely deserves this call up. I think you know, leading WCT Pro so far, he's had a a pretty good year. He's not on the pace of you know uh, Robin Perra or Matt Sosberg, but he's not also too far off. So I think he should be able to comfortably beat all the R5 cars. Hopefully, get it to the finish and uh, you know pick up some points for M Sport. And uh, obviously that's three cars uh, for M Sport, which is nice to see as well. Uh, we haven't, well, we've seen most most of the rounds so far. I've been with two. Um, let's, let's. I'll touch on M Sport actually because last season this is where Evans and Sunderman both finished on the podium. Ogier, of course, uh, clipped a rock and uh, retired from the event, but uh, his two teammates back then put in really solid results. And I think uh, I've heard Evans saying we're kind of teeing this one up. Uh, as a possible big result for M Sport, I think both drivers could come quite strong here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Sunderland setting, you know, the third fastest time in shakedown, and also comes into this, I think, you know, in decent form. I mean, both of them really have sort of threatened to have really good results this season. Evans has actually had, you know, really good results, and Sunderland maybe needs a, a, a podium. So yeah, I think uh, it should be both good bets for for a podium finish this weekend. Uh, would you say that Tanak is favourite to carry on? Uh, his form and take victory here or with that road position being second on the road is it going to be quite tough for him I think he'll just be okay I think if he was on first on the road maybe a little bit different but I think he's just got the momentum I think that probably the biggest thing is if he can sort of keep it on the road and sort of hopefully that Yaris won't have any sort of technical issues that we've sort of seen so far this season he's been a little fragile in places but if he can sort of have no incidents or you have very few incidents I think yeah he's, he's definitely the favourite I would agree with that. Uh, Ogier is very, very strong at this event. I think he's won it five times, but um, opening the road, I think you can safely say he's out of it. And then I think that that does go into Tanak's favour. But as you say, there is a lot of problems with that Toyota. And these are the kind of events that they haven't done brilliantly at, is the, the hot uh, events. And um, I think they want to get a little bit of extra testing uh, in hot conditions to make sure that the, the car is reliable. But uh, for now... I suppose it's just fingers crossed, really, for them. But uh, they need a good run of results, don't they? Uh, especially, especially with the other cars as well. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, also, I, I definitely take a look at Sebastian Loeb as well as one of the main victory contenders. You know, great rally last time out. So I'd probably put sort of him up there, just sort of below Tanak. And I think let's do the weekly edition of could Chris Meek win this rally? <laughs> um, no, I, I think a more realistic sort of target for him is just to get to the end without any major problems and hopefully pick up uh, his first podium of the season. And then we'll start talking about a win. Yeah, I, I think with Meek, we kind of said Chile wasn't an event that, that was going to be necessarily a good one for him um but this one should should suit him and I, I agree he needs a podium soon because although he's doing all right in the championship he didn't have a good round last time and as if he just carries on coming off the podium it's gonna i think it's gonna play on his mind then a little bit isn't it if he's still thinking oh I yeah haven't had a big result yet Definitely. I mean, he won in 2016 here, but then he also last year it was exactly the scene of, you know, the whole thing where he was, you know, taken out of uh, of Citroen. So this is, uh, I think, uh, a big point to prove for him, really. To come here and get a good result would, uh, I think, mean a lot to Chris Mee. Well, let's quickly touch now on the support categories. Uh, the introduction of the new Skoda Fabio R5 uh, comes this time round, and we've got two cars uh, Cali Rovenpera, who of course won in uh, Chile in WRC2 Pro, had a good fight with Osberg in the opening day and then pulled away to take victory there, finally got his season up and running. And he's joined now by Jan Kopescu, who makes his first appearance, of course won the WRC2 title last year. And he gave the car its uh, first appearance uh, at uh, a rally in the Czech Republic, a national round, which he won uh, despite having a penalty, but it's a given that he'll kind of win in the Czech <laughs> Czech Rally Championship, he always does, uh, pretty much. Um, but those guys have done very, very well so far in shakedown. And uh, it's I think that new Fabia is going to be tough for Osberg to fight with, who's also here this weekend. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the, the sort of old Fabio was uh, already pretty difficult to fight with. So now they've got a, a new version that's obviously going to be even stronger. Um, like you said, Jan already has uh, experience with this car. And of course, in the chat rally, he's been testing the car as well. So you think Kopecky would probably have the sort of upper hand, uh, at least for now. But obviously, we know how quick 
uh, Robin Perez as well. So those guys are going to be, I think, fighting it out at the front. Um, who else have we got? We've got Ole Kristen Vaby, I think, should be right up there. Uh, Matt Osberg, as you said. So I think they're the main four we're looking at, but you've also got well, a whole host of other people as well. Uh, Yari Hooten and back in a home dive, but the strange one after to being in the Skoda and uh, Henning Solberg. Yeah, there's just uh, quite a lot of names, isn't there? Yeah, look, Henning Solberg seems to just pop up every so often, doesn't he? Yeah. Uh, in an R5, and he's, he's chosen this one as uh, one of his events. But yeah, the, the standard WRC2 entrance, we've we've got a, a nice balance here. We've got, um, as well, we've got Benito Guerra, who's actually uh, at the moment at the top of the championship, isn't he? But this is the first time that he's going to properly come up against a number of European opposition in Europe, rather than kind of events that he knows well in the Americas. So... Don't expect him to be competitive, but for the championship, if he can keep consistent, that'd be quite good. As he said, Vaby, he'll be strong. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what uh, Hootenin can do, because I think that he um, has now got a chance of possibly getting into that Hyundai lineup later in the season. With them being so flexible, they could have a bit of a problem in kind of events like Finland. If he proves himself, that could be his chance to get into the WRC. Yeah, I'd really like to see him in Finland. Uh, like they said, they have a, a major problem. Sordo and Loeb don't want to do it. I don't think even Mickelson's that keen, but he'll probably take anything right now. Hayden Padden would be, you know, ideal, but I think he said he he won't do it. Um, so yeah, Hootenen's got a great chance here if he can perform well now. Uh, yeah, I don't see why not. Yeah, but it is it is pressure on, isn't it? Because he's got limited opportunities. There's only two rallies before Finland. So, and we, um, yeah, and, and we know that that Hyundai is not the, the quickest yeah. R5 car as well, so it's a bit, uh, a little stacked up against them. Yeah, I guess we'll see. It is a lot of WRC2 entrants, so that could just play out as so often, isn't it? Someone can just surprise us and put in mm -hmm. uh, a good performance. Uh, so we'll watch out for that one. But yeah, that is uh, Rally Portugal this weekend. Should be an interesting one. And uh, soon after this, of course, there's. Uh, uh, the Rally Sardinia, uh, and then they're off to their break. So important to carry uh, the momentum into the summer break. So an important few rallies coming up. And uh, yep, uh, we'll speak to you after uh, Rally Portugal and ahead of uh, Rally Italy. But uh, thank you very much for listening today, and goodbye.